Hi, I'm Phil Donahue. And I'm Marlo Thomas. And we're going on a series of double dates to find out what makes a marriage last. Our date in Los Angeles with Ray and Anna Romano involved a little more staging than we were used to. They'd asked us to meet at a hotel near their home, so we got there a few hours early, and rather than sit in a noisy lobby, we booked a room, ordered room service, and then proceeded to rearrange all the furniture until the setting was just right. Once they arrived, we all raided the minibar, and everyone ate M&Ms while Marlo struggled with the recording equipment. And that has to go on. It is. I can't believe you're doing it all. I know. (laughs) Yeah, those are on, but then when you press this button... Does it light? Because it's a, something's supposed to light. It's a button, though. I don't think. Let's see here. But you sorted it out like a champ. Oh, the light isn't on. There oh. you go. Yes. Yeah, you had you had it uh, upside down. Okay. Well, that's part of <laughs> that's kind of my personality. Yeah. We right. finally settled down to talk. Well, first of all, you guys met when how? We we worked together at a bank. At a bank, we were we bank, were bank tellers. tellers. We were really young and. I was bank teller. Ugh, I think I started was, there when I was 18, yeah, but I, he wasn't there yet. I started working there when I was 25. I lived at home till I was 29. Wow. Yeah. So I drove my bike to work. I was pretty much like not the, the new stud guy working at the <laughs> bank. Yeah when, yeah. He, yeah, when he started there, there was a bunch of young girls. We all worked there. And we're like, oh, there's a young guy starting here. <laughs> Yay, you know, whatever. Um, and then he strolled in on a bike. <laughs> I was Just a, I and really, late, by the way. I, always 10 to 15 really minutes late. Yeah. Should have known back then. Well, we it wasn't going to change. About two years, and I, I left after two years, right? And then I asked her out uh, after I had left the bank. Yeah. After I wasn't working anymore. But, little footnote, <laughs> she was the third girl I asked out at the bank. The first two said no. Really? <laughs> yeah. They didn't trust you at the yeah. bank. Oh, wow. Well. Well, Why well. did you live at home? Was that like an Italian thing? Because that's an Irish part, thing. It was part that. And, but, but I but feel also, like everyone in our neighborhood stayed home till they were married. Yeah. Most, yeah, most of, of them. People, I would say 95% of the people that we A lot of my buddies know. didn't move out until they got married. They, I just happened to get married later. But also, I was kind of nowhere in my career or what I wanted to do. I, I had dropped out of college, and I was just kind of in nowhere land. Until he and, met me. Yeah, until I then met her. Then it all her, yeah. came together. And when I met her, it was the same time I, I, I also started doing stand-up comedy. I always tell her, she took a gamble, because she went out with a guy who lived at home and rode a bike to work. <laughs> I know. And now she has uh, her own movie theater. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, you deserve it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Believe me, I do. You put your chips. <laughs> I earned it. That's right. Yeah. Well, what was it about him? I mean, did I, I um, wouldn't you know, have wanted to go with a guy who yeah, you know, was a bike I, I in his think, 20s. Honest, <laughs> honestly, I think it just grew from a friendship into a relationship. Yeah, so I think yeah, we, were friends we became first, friends. Yeah. And he was funny. And he was kind and sweet. He really was... An yeah. easy personality, you know. We didn't have any expectations when we were dating. It wasn't like, and, and we just yeah. kind of did it. It was like what Rocky says in, uh, like what Stallone said in Rocky. It fills gaps. He goes, I got gaps, she's got gaps. Together we fill gaps. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true with us. Yeah. We fill gaps. Yeah. And and so you didn't, so he looked like he was going nowhere. So you could be yeah, working I at the bank the rest yeah, of your life. I, it didn't, I didn't care, I guess. It didn't matter. I didn't have... But to, be, but to tell you the truth, I've always said this. She would be happy if I was a plumber. If, if a plumber made the same amount of money <laughs> that I did. Yes. Yeah, you, well... You, you weren't uh, looking... If he could to, fix yeah. things, would be really <laughs> yes, great. Yes, yes. <laughs> were you doing stand-up at the time? I was like no, 27. I, I guess I was about a year and a half, two years into my stand-up. So it's still very early. Yeah. It's still very early. I'm still, I'm still not making a living. I was going to say, you're I'm, not making no, a living. No, I'm yeah. doing it at night, and I'm working with my friend who owns a futon mattress company during the day. I never had the idea this is going to be my career stand-up when we started dating. I just loved to do it, and I just kept doing it. You, tr- you must have trusted something about him, right? He was funny, and he, he was just kind. You know, he's just a good person. I haven't he would heard be the loyal. word sexy yet. <laughs> <laughs> that came of later. How, he was how sexy, long did, you, did it take you when you started dating to get married? 
About two, two years. years. Yeah. About two, two years. years. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's healthy. But I think we were both yeah. ready to, to be married. I remember one time, I don't know what the reason was, but I got jealous somehow. It was the first time I felt like this. And I don't know, I just felt like it, it, it kind of crossed over, you know, for me. Aww, but, you never told me that. <laughs> the territorial thing. No, yeah. new things. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think we just both had the same goals without really even talking about it you know we both wanted kids and a family and that's all we really wanted so everything else was a bonus you know yeah, there wasn't like a it, it just evolved there wasn't a shocking me proposing and her <gasps> yeah, no, yeah, no, no. No. no it just was a slow realization yeah. that that we both agree we want to get married so having lived with your mom and dad all that time yeah. And you moved in for the first time with, with her. Yeah. I used to do stories about that in my stand up. These are jokes, but but these were true. Like <laughs> day one when you move in with someone is a crucial day because you you know, there's decisions to be made on day one that you don't think are important when you're living on your own. Like what side of the bed do you get? And I thought that was trivial. <laughs> And then I realized that's your side for life right there. <laughs> yeah. And I blew the call. I didn't, I didn't look at the TV angle. I blew the call. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think we were also brought up the same way where his mom did, you know, took care of the men in yes. the house. My mother, very Italian, I'm took care of the house. I'm not proud of this, but I didn't do a, a load of, yeah. I had, first load of laundry I ever did was, was when I got the TV show and I had to come out here by myself. And I remember having to call you and say, where do I put the thing in the yeah, soap yeah. or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I think we had a lot of the same background. So we kind of just fell into our roles, which yeah. I wish we didn't fall into those roles because I do everything. But Yeah, it wasn't like all of a sudden yeah. living on my own. It was like uh, I was still being taken care yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yes. thing that we're yeah. going to do. You know, the fact that you're both Italian, I mean, my mom was Sicilian, my father's Lebanese, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of screaming in our house. Yeah. You know? yeah. Phil always said in his house, everything was very quiet. Really? Oh. You know? Yeah, not in they our didn't, house. His parents didn't fight. I yeah. was a great shock to him because I'm... Because you're a fighter. We're going to hear it right yeah. away, and I'm through with it in three minutes. He, yeah. on the other hand, is well, like, see, that's what the other, yeah. Why did the ceiling She's fall? She's Sicilian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it, too. Yeah. Like, we get mad, and then yeah. it's over. You know, we're done with so it. So how do you fight? Do you fight the same way? Yeah, uh, we, we fight of... the same way. She yells at me. <laughs> Normally, when we have a disagreement, I get loud. I get it's a you loud. getting loud to me. I don't return it because I know I'm always the one in trouble. So for me to <laughs> flip it on you, like I don't think I have the right to oh, yell good. at I'm, you. I'm glad. You feel that way. I know. <laughs> I'm always the one. I think he's also very good at, um, like, I'm quick-tempered and I'll get mad and I don't think things through. And he'll be like, okay, all right, all right, calm down for a second. Are you the right. one that comes and makes it better? Do you ever apologize after you've started that? or No. He's the one that... We don't <laughs> apologize to each other. <laughs> That's no, another thing. a couple of times where... Very, yeah. I mean, it has to be a big fight. If it's yeah. stupid little fights, no. We don't really... Right apologize we just get over it and that's it no but even like not to go back to my act but <laughs> but it's all about a guy is always trying to score points with his wife and and what i've what i've realized is in this game where we're trying to score points we're, yeah, we're always behind we're always behind you never feel you have to score points with me. I always well, I don't feel... Know. I guess I don't do anything wrong. Huh? <laughs> right? No, no. It's not that you don't do anything wrong. It's, oh, that, oh. it's that you do so much more good. Oh, okay. You know, where I feel like if I see the guy selling the flower on the corner, I go, let me get it and bring it home because it'll score some points. Where she doesn't feel that. She's, a, she's ahead in points. Know. Well, I think that's true. <laughs> I know. That's, that's... Look, listen. When I was uh, doing my show and all that, she's the one home with the four kids, and right. she's the one, and I'm the one going uh, on the road and going to wherever to film and going here. Of course, she's ahead in points, you know. Right. She, she's the one uh, holding the fort down, and I mean, I'm paying for the fort. But still. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we yeah. have that. <laughs> well, so trust is a big thing. So trust yes. was yeah. not a thing you guys had to work on. You had that? Yeah, we had that. I think for us, it was, he became the Hollywood star, and I really was like the stay-at-home mom. I didn't have a career. I didn't have, 
I was not in this business. So I stayed in Queens for the first season and he moved out. So he was living with his single friend who was always looking for girls. And I, I told him too. This I go, is during Everybody Loves Raymond. During Everybody during the Loves first Raymond. Season. I stayed in Queens with my three kids. I didn't, we only had three Because we didn't time. know if it was going to get canceled right. or whatever. So, Alan Alda did so too. He, yeah. him, he living with this friend of his, I told the friend, I go, you're not allowed to bring girls up there. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. We're paying for the apartment. You're not having girlfriends up there, you know? Because, you know, now here's a new celebrity. I don't yeah. know what it's like. He's I don't cute. know. Yeah, and girls, bet. you know, are looking for the next best thing. And I just, I didn't want, of course I don't want that. I have three little kids, you know. I, was, I think he was well, loyal. He I felt, you know yeah, I knew I was. he was very yeah. loyal. But, but still, it doesn't even matter that you're loyal. I, you, I worry about the other women, the women, because they may can, be at gunpoint. They, <laughs> they may force you to <laughs> sleep with that. I don't know, you know, yeah, yeah. and you may have to say, I have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, there was a little bit of that, and I, maybe I was a little, like, worried, but not, I, I really, I trusted him. I really trusted Sophia him. Sophia Loren asked my husband out to lunch. Mm. And I said, I don't think so. I really do. <laughs> yeah. For what, under what well, the, purpose? Yeah. Well, the women in my office would claim that if a female guest came on to me, I didn't know it was oh. happening. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. That was a good thing, yeah. yeah. But he had Sophia oh, Loren so on his funny. show, right? Yes. The day after the show, she invited him to lunch. He called me. I was in New York. He was in Chicago. I was working, and he was working. And he said to me, you know, Sophia Loren called me and invited me to lunch. What do you think? I said, well, if she'd invited you to lunch before she did the show, I'd understand that. Because yes. that means and she wants, she to, wants yeah. to get to know her, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit, so you'll you know, get to know her. But if she invites you to lunch after the show, yeah. Yeah. he said, yeah, that's what I thought. I get more jealous. The funny thing is I get more jealous than she does. And I'm the one in the scenes with the women here. That, not a lot, but there's on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. And... I had to do a threesome with uh, the show Vinyl that I did about rock and roll in the 70s. It was on HBO. It was like two two years ago. And I had to do a scene with the threesome. So, with two young... Right. Are you going to tell that part? That they're how young... Well, I don't know. I don't okay. know. Were, young whatever. naked girls. Yes. Okay. Young it, naked girls. Well, yeah. it was HBO. It was... Mick Jagger was producing it. It was, it was on for one season. It was about rock and roll in the 70s. So... I play a music producer, whatever. After which she goes, all right, well, what was it like? Tell me what the scene was like. I asked a lot of details. <laughs> I needed to hear the details. I told her, I said, it's, it's, it's horrible. There's a guy there and there's a boom mic there. And, you know, we're wearing protective stuff and she's sitting uh, here and whatever, <laughs> I asked, you know. I was like, yeah. where is she sitting? Yeah, where's yeah. her hand? Yeah. Where's your hand? Where yeah. was? And right. he's like, oh, I, and I, it's I, so, I. It's so <laughs> unromantic. But anyway. <laughs> So that ends, and then she was out in the, it was in New York, we filmed it, and then she had to fly back to L.A., and I call her after the plane lands, and I go, how was your flight? And she said, it was good. I sat next to this actor, this la young Latino actor, and he... Well, wannabe. <laughs> he, he found out I was your husband, and um, he gave me his card. So right away, now I'm the jail. I'm like... <laughs> Like, what do you mean he gave you his uh, card? Right? <laughs> a she thousand goes, questions. She's like, what do you mean? He gave me his card because he knows he is, I'm you. He goes, but why, why would he give me his card? I go, I go, and I kept going, and she's getting annoyed. I go, what was his name? What was his name? And she stops me, and she goes, what was the name of the girl that sat on your cock? <laughs> Them up. Oh, God. I did this movie with Chris Christopherson, and we're in bed, yeah. you know, kissing and whatever. And when it's, and the, the scene was literally four minutes long. And when the movie was over, he said, that is the longest fucking love scene I've ever seen uh. in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was it <laughs> We'll have more after a quick break. We're back to our conversation with Ray and Anna Romano. They've been together for more than 30 years. Not an easy thing to do in Hollywood. So Marlo asked, what's the glue that keeps them together? It's that we're compatible. She's this person, I'm this person. I'm this person who performs and part of me needs attention and this and that. That doesn't threaten her and she doesn't feel neglected by that, you know? In, in, especially in this business, 
the pieces have to fit that way, I feel. Like he needs that attention from other people. All I want is the attention from my family. I don't really need it from And me, and she doesn't people. even get it from me as much as yes, I should. Yes, not at and all. And yet she uh, accepts Why is that? that? Is that your Catholic Italian thing? Yeah, the father and he's, all that. You know, my father was very yeah. undemonstrative, and it was just hard to show anything like that. Yeah. But you know what? I don't even think it's only that, because I noticed... I think it's genetic. I think it's something you're born with. But and they also you pick are. up on They're, me. Because yeah, I, maybe. I, yeah. I, my father never said he loved me to me. Never. Uh, so I go out of my way to make sure yeah. my kids don't feel that. But even when I do, it doesn't roll off the tongue. It's, it's, it doesn't it, come natural. It's, yes, but I do it. But, but I feel self-conscious doing it. So they pick up on that a little yeah. bit. You know? yeah. Well, my kids are now... They now say, love you. Yeah. That was hard. It's hard, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it came yeah. Out. Was it hard for you, though, to tell yeah. them? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's weird how just some people... Yeah. yeah. The yeah. first time he told me he loved me, we were in Chicago near his home. We were taking a walk. And he said to me, okay, I'm going to play a card here. <laughs> <laughs> he was setting you up for it. Yeah. I'll play a card here. I said, yeah. He says, I love you. I said... <laughs> That's a card? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he's trying to see if you're going to... He's it's trying to see if you can get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right, Because right. his parents never it said I love you. didn't come natural. Yeah. My parents come... said I love you all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We yeah. cried. My father cried all the time. My oh. mother cried. Everybody was very emotional. <laughs> right, people. right, oh, right. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so it was completely different kind of... Well, how about the first time we we kissed? Yeah, the, so the first time we kissed, he drove me home to my mom's house, and we, we made out in the car, so we were done, and I don't know what you know. I don't know what to do next. And so I look at him, and he literally is not looking at me. He can't even look at me. He's looking straight <laughs> out the windshield, straight ahead. And I'm like, um, oh, okay. So I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know. You'll call me. I don't know. It was so awkward. You know, no. the afterwards was awkward. The during yeah. was fine. You know. I know. So <laughs> what have you learned from being married this long? that you would pass on? Well, I think you shouldn't decide until you know the person totally, you know? I think by the time we decided, you knew who I was, yeah. and I knew who you were. Yeah, but we were yeah. together two years where some yeah. people date 10 years, they get married and then get divorced. I know. And I never understand it's that, I know. you know? I so what, what, yeah. the, what's the big surprise? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. What about stress? Who handles it better? We stress over different things. That's the problem. But Why I'm worse is different. because I stress over things that you really shouldn't. You know, I'm neurotic. I'm, I'm the neurotic yeah. one. So well, like I'll, what? I'll stress over, you know, what's this bump? What's this thing? I, that guy, he hates me. You know, stuff Const like that. But constantly, yeah. all, all day, there's something. You know, I'm the, I am. I'm neurotic. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, I'm a hypochondriac. I'm a pessimist. And I obsess over things. Where she stresses over things like yeah, that's I stress true. over like real things, and that's when I am the rational one. I stress over the kids, you know, if they're not working, they're not going to school, or it's just big, the real life yeah. things where he's just obsessed over little. Yeah, well, there's a there's a great saying that a, a good marriage people don't go crazy at the same time. Mm -hmm. yes. We go crazy at the same time. Oh. <laughs> so. You know, oh, well, when he panics, I together. panic, and when I panic, he panics. Yeah. And, I've, and I've been trying to really work on that, yeah. which is when he panics, I really try very hard not yeah. to, and, and he tries not to. I think to. we do that. I think yeah. we do that pretty good. We, yeah. Yeah. Interviewing other people about marriage is really yeah. interesting, because every time we do, we get in the car and say, well, do we do that? Do you yeah. do you know? Yeah. And one of the things we were thinking through is about what we really get from the other that we just can't get anyplace else and mm -hmm. not love and sex and those things but other emotional yeah. things and I'm a very self-reliant person wow. I'm very resourceful and tough and all mm -hmm. that but when I get blue or down there's only one person can make it better and that's Phil he will talk me out of where I put yeah. myself I'm one of those people who always feels I said the wrong thing somewhere yeah and I, did you see that person's face I mean I really why did I say that then I said, are you kidding you were the most interesting person at the party are you crazy oh, you know yes. he'll just bring me all the way from yeah. zero up so I'm trying to figure out how that 
if there's that in you guys. Uh, I think, uh, well, he's... Well, I get, well, what I get from her is the truth, you know? In this business where everyone either is phony or kissing your ass, you know, I know that's not going to happen with her. She's just going to tell me the truth and not, not be mean about it, but it's exactly what I want, you know? You can count on it. Yes. Perfect example. And when Everybody Loves Raymond premiered, I was in L.A. and She was home with the kids. And so to celebrate, we were going to go to Vegas, me and Kevin James, my buddy. And when I told her we're going to Vegas, she goes, oh, you're going to Vegas. I'm, uh, at the meantime, I'm home with the kids. I go, but my show premiered. And I was kind of being mockingly cocky, you know. I was saying, do you understand what, what is happening right now? My, I'm, I'm being broadcast in front of the whole United States, okay? 30 million people are going to see me tonight. You know, I'm just trying to be annoying, whatever. I'm, a, I'm going to be a star tomorrow. And to which she said, you're still the dick I married. <laughs> there goes my dirty mouth again. That is so wonderful. We had such a great time with Ray and Anna. After we wrapped up, we realized... We had completely forgotten to ask about one very important experience that they had gone through together. Days later, we called them on the phone to hear the story. So were you alone when you got the news, uh, Anna? Or were you, was Ray with you with the doctor? Or how, how did it happen? Um, well, <clears throat> the gynecologist found a lump. So we did a mammogram, and they found something. Yeah, when I picked up the phone, you were crying, and I thought immediately thought it was my father because my father was was close to to yeah, leaving he was us. Ill. Yeah. And then you told me that. Uh, yeah. Your, so then that he found so something. I was, yeah. Yeah, I got very. I was very upset. And then you went for the biopsy. Yeah. We had to wait a whole weekend to get the results, and then when we got the results, it was like Monday morning at 9 a.m. Yeah, it was Monday morning. We, we were together because we were waiting for him for them to call, you know? Yeah, we called from the bathroom. I remember we were in the bathroom. You know, it's very nerve. You're, you're nervous all weekend. We were hosting a Super Bowl party that weekend. Oh, God. We had 50, yeah. 50, 50 at least people over our house. And we just had to, you know, uh, yeah, we, get through it. I'm sure that was very scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very. But, yeah. but we were first trying to say, look, it, let's not, let's not think it's anything until we know it's something, you know. Right, right, right. Um, I think it was like 9 a.m. on a Monday they called us. You know, first we kind of got emotional, and um, but then we immediately wanted to didn't want to waste any time, you know. Yeah. I remember I had to call my manager and cancel. It, it kind of hit me then when I had to tell him why. Um, I was in my memory. I was in the closet and I got a little. I got a little. It, it overtook me a little bit. So at that moment when you got the phone call, they said, um, "So it is breast cancer." And of course, I, you know, whatever. I'm going to get emotional. I know. Well, who um, wouldn't? I'm getting I, emotional listening to it. I don't know. I, I think when you get the news, it's just... Well, I think I was all weekend just trying to convince myself, well, it's not. It's not going to be that, you know? And mind you, Ray is such a hypochondriac. He's always like, I think I have stomach cancer. I think I have this cancer. <laughs> and I, it's funny because it's not funny, but I did say to him, I go... You're the one who always thinks you have cancer. I never do, and I'm the one who gets it, you know. But I'm glad it was me and not you because at least I guess I'm stronger maybe in that sense. I don't know. It was a very emotional period because the, also the day you had your surgery was the day my father passed away. Oh, yeah. my. And I remember. So, yeah, we were driving to the hospital, you know, at like, I don't know, 6 a.m., and my mother-in-law called us to say, they think today is going to be the day that he passes. I don't know what right. happened. Right, and, and, yeah. and while you were getting prepped, my mother called me and told me he passed away, and then, and then I saw you before you went in, but I didn't tell you. You said, yeah. how did you follow? But I didn't want to tell you then. But then we kind of, you know, you, we made like a uh, connection and, and a feeling that my father kind of went to a place where he could look over you yeah. Now, now I'm getting emotional, and and make sure that everything goes well for you. You know. Ah, uh, that's a lovely thought. Well, my I learned how strong she is. You know, uh -huh. and and I learned. You know, 
I'm not the most demonstrative man. Um, Anna knows this about me. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, when something like this happens and you face the fact that you may lose someone like this, it it kind of... Uh, it, it shines a light on how much you love this person, and uh, and I should say it. Yes, <laughs> I you should, should uh, every day. <laughs> yes, the reason this marriage works is because, thankfully, um, she knows I love her. And you know, some women who have to hear it out loud, it's not going to go. It's not going to go that well when you're married to a guy like me. You know. <laughs> uh, Well, it's pretty clear how well it is going between Ray and Anna Romano. And it was such fun hanging out with them. It sure was. Until next time, I'm Phil Donahue. And I'm Marlo Thomas. Did you start telling her you loved her then? No. (laughs) Uh, I I did then, but... uh, You probably said it a couple more times, but... (laughs) Ten years... Ten years later, though. Double Date is a production of Pushkin Industries. The show was created by us and produced by Sarah Lilly. Michael Bahari is associate producer. Musical adaptations of It Had to Be You by Stellwagen Symphonette. Marlo and I are executive producers, along with Mia Lobel and Lital Molad from Pushkin. Special thanks to Jacob Weisberg, Malcolm Gladwell, Heather Fain, John Schnars, Carly Migliori, Eric Sandler, Emily Rostek, Jason Gambrell, Paul Williams, and Bruce Kluger. If you like our show, please remember to share, rate, and review. Thanks for listening. <laughs>